Welcome to Mojo Talks, and this is Watch Club, the series where we break down the biggest shows on TV. I'm your host, Matt, and this is Phoebe, and we're going to get into a Westworld. The premiere was yesterday, and if you're wondering if it's still confusing, well, it is, but we're going to be doing our best to kind of break it down for you. Oh, sorry, Dolores. It was lost in thought. We were just talking. So right now, we're going to talk about our favorite moments to start things off a little light. Um, so I'm going to throw it to my panelist, Phoebe, here. Phoebe, what were your favorite moments? Uh, my favorite moments were any time where Dolores was on screen. She was such a badass in this episode. Um, obviously, at the very beginning of the episode, uh, when the Delos crew is taking the brain thing out of the guy's yes. head and looking at his memories to see, you know, who started this revolution. And they see her, and she's the one who killed him, which is really interesting because originally she sort of had it out for the newcomers, yeah. but now she's killing hosts. Yeah. So what does it mean? That's it. You kind yeah. of just like, oh, she's after everyone who put her in this terrible situation of exactly. controlling her life. But she's kind of almost going rogue, which is interesting. Yeah, and yeah. she also said in the recording, if I'm not mistaken, she said, we can't all make it. I told you, friend, not all of us deserve to make it to the valley beyond. So she's sort yes. of like going off the rails, which I thought was really, really cool, yeah. a cool turn for her character. Um, and then we have later in the episode where she is hanging uh, people who were attending the gala in the last episode of the first season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's just sort of like no remorse. Uh, she just, you know, lets them die, basically, which yeah. I thought was pretty badass and pretty crazy. It was creepy that they're like standing on crosses, too, yeah. which is like ironic, but also very kind of dark really and disturbing. Creepy, yeah. It's very interesting that you choose like literally the most like psychotic and dark moments <laughs> of the episode. Very interesting. Well. Yeah. Um, so I would have to say that some of my favorite moments were definitely like when Maeve and Lee come on on, on screen. Yeah. And it basically starts with Lee. He's about to be like eaten by this cannibal that he created. It's so funny because the cannibal's like, oh, I like to eat them when they're moist. And then you throw back, you remember in season one, you, there's like the moment when he actually thinks he's so clever coming up with the lines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is why I always consume victims moist. Um, and then Maeve comes in, obviously. And then she has a great line too, where she's like, "I'll relieve you of your organ, or I'll relieve you of your favorite organ and feed it to you if like you don't help me." And then he's just like, "I wrote that line for you." <laughs> so I thought like those comedic elements were super yeah. good. Um, and also, um, when Bernard's in that like secret bunker that he didn't even know about, yeah. and we see like the first, what do they call it, the first drone host? Oh yes, that was. Crazy. I remember he's just like walking towards the camera, and you see like a little blur in the background, and I was like legitimately scared. I was like, oh my god, what's what that? Is that? Yeah. And he was pretty terrifying. Yeah, so. that was really yeah. creepy. I also really liked um, the whole, you know, the man in black in this episode. I thought that it was really yes. interesting. Uh, I think what sort of adds dimension to his character is uh, the stakes now, you know? So we saw in the last few episodes of the first season that he was excited by the fact that he could be injured by hosts now because it's yeah. sort of like, you know, it brings the stakes up and the whole thing is that he wants to, you know, find meaning and sort yeah. of like live on the edge. So that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, when he meets up with the Robert Ford kid, that was pretty sick. Uh, their confrontation was amazing. <laughs> and when he when he shoots him, you sort of see his face like explode because yeah. he's one of the older models. Yeah. I thought that that was really, really cool. And they have like um, that shot of, like you said, his face and half of it is ripped yeah. off. And again, I just want to point out, you like, <laughs> Uh, when she's shooting everyone in the face, when she's hanging people, and especially when the young boy gets his face blown off. A, so I just want to point reckoning. that out to it's our audience. Reckoning. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something else has been growing. I've evolved into something new. And I have one last role to play. Myself. So we just finished talking about our favorite moments. Next is our segment that we like to call uh, What You Missed. So we talk about all the little Easter eggy things that you might have missed. Um, my favorite one was the cotton swab moment. Ooh, do you yeah. remember seeing that? Did I you miss remember. that? No, I didn't miss it. I, yeah. It was hard to miss. <laughs> to I be think some with people you. did though. Well, they see that there's like a little swab, yeah. but maybe didn't notice that it was a, a pubic swab. <laughs> 
And I was just like, whoa, that's crazy. And like Bernard kind of gets to the gist of it. He's like, yeah. wait, are you, are you gathering DNA from hosts? Are we logging records of guests' experiences and their DNA? We're not having that conversation, Bernard. But you know, like, I forget the girl's name, but she doesn't say anything. Yeah. So it's like, you're kind of like left to wonder if it's true or not. Yeah. But then I remembered, I think it was on Twitter where Westworld posted like this weird kind of like customer agreement thing where it's okay. like, once you enter the park, like you give off full rights to anything you leave in there. So any bodily fluids of any kind, saliva, uh, oh. semen, this, 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 it's our property now. So it does seem like Delos is actually harvesting guests' DNA. Interesting. And you know, what does that mean? What are they gonna do with it, you know? Yeah. Crazy stuff. That's really um, weird. So that was one thing you guys might have missed, and the other was the wolf, who Ooh, makes a yes. little bit of a comeback. We see him in season one when um, that huge massacre happens, or before it anyways. And the same thing happens this season. Well, after the man in black is revealed to be alive, covering himself with all those bodies, he makes contact, eye contact with the wolf. So my theory is that whenever you see this wolf, bad things are gonna happen, people are gonna die. Yeah. That, and you know, it's kind of like sentience. It's just like a place of that whole kind of like, okay. like sentient beings and like how the robots are becoming more self-aware and stuff like that. So those are what I think that um, the audience may have missed, but what about you? What do you think the well, audience you know, may be missed? There's a lot of things that could be missed. Uh, I know that this is one of the most confusing shows yes. I've ever watched. Yes. Uh, people on Twitter this morning were just going crazy, <laughs> saying like, what just happened? But anyway, um, my parts you missed, I guess, would be when Dolores is fleeing the scene of you know hanging the guests uh, There it is the again, crosses. yeah. She says, <laughs> doesn't look like anything to me. Uh, in the first season, when uh, Bernard is confronted by Teresa when she finds the blueprints for essentially what is his model, he yes. says, doesn't look like anything to me. What is this, Bernard? Doesn't look like anything to me. So I think that that is pretty interesting. I know that in this show there are a lot of callbacks and sort of you know uh, yeah. similar lines are said, and I know that it never it never means nothing. Uh, so that's really interesting. Yeah, um, I would agree. It also just goes to show that Dolores is sort of you know becoming more independent and uh, becoming more sentient, if you will. Yeah, like exactly. She, she definitely is making her own decisions and saying like you know I'm deciding to just like let it go and I don't care. Yeah, like she's completely self-aware. Exactly. Yes, yeah, she is. And the other part that I uh, don't know if anybody else noticed, but there was a Bengal tiger uh, that had washed up on the shore, mm -hmm. and everyone's very confused. Like no you know host or has ever like come to another. Right. Park. Yeah, so the, now, the people even mentioned that. They're exactly. Like, They've never crossed these jurisdictions or whatever exactly. they called it. Yeah. So that was really cool. Uh, is it an India world? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. That could because be I was really gonna interesting. Say, I mean, it would be hard for people to miss the dead Bengal tiger because exactly. I mean, but the the ramifications of why this tiger has washed ashore is that's, interesting. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that uh, like leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think there's also rumors. Or I don't even know if the rumors or if it's been said to be true, but uh, six other operational parks yes. in Westworld, correct? We did see in season one kind of reference to like Samurai World, where they're walking yes. through the lab and we see all of that. So um, an India world might not be out of the question. That's pretty interesting. Yes, it would be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those are things that the audience may have missed. We're going to wrap that up now. And now uh, we're going to talk about some predictions. We've ridden 10 miles and all we've seen is blood, Dolores. Is this really what you want? So, Phoebe, predictions. Predictions. This is where we can be as wild as we want or as safe, but <laughs> um, I mean, I'll start with mine. Yeah. I think mine's a little, it's a little low key, and I think it definitely has a very high chance of happening. Cool. Um, so as we know, Abernathy is missing. He's gone, yeah. He was supposed missing. to be the little USB stick that was sent across the pond to leak all of this information, mm -hmm. but he's missing and people are wondering where he's going. So my prediction is that he's out and about and he's trying to find Dolores. Because mm -hmm. in season one, uh, he says how his only will to live or something along those lines is because of Dolores. Mm -hmm. So it only makes sense that this father figure of hers is traveling Westworld to find her. And I think that eventually, maybe not next episode, but in the next couple of episodes, I think they'll finally reunite and thus, uh, through connection, will reunite Bernard and Dolores. Ooh. Because 
I mean, they need to find her because uh, the lady that's with Bernard, I keep blanking on her name, yeah. but she she needs to find him as well. So I think worlds will collide there, yes. and then who knows what happens? Who because knows? we also know Bernard and Dolores have a very interesting relationship they when they do. get together and talk. So yeah. that's my prediction. But you have a slightly more bold one, I believe. <laughs> I believe. Well, well, uh, in the last scene, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, unless spoiler you alert, haven't unless uh, you... caught on to that already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, the, the Delos crew approaches this big body of water, and there are what looks like hundreds or th even thousands of hosts in the water. Yes. Um, that's really interesting. That's kind of disturbing, a little bit crazy. Yeah, another um, disturbing moment. Let's <laughs> add that to your list here. Yeah. I think maybe they're not dead. And that oh. they are luring the agents to come and, you know, be there. Oh, that that's interesting. That could be really interesting. However, there is also another really interesting theory making the rounds that uh, the the body that was focused on so much in the last shot All right. might be Teddy. You know what? When I was watching and they zoomed in on his face, I mean, the water made it murky yeah. and the skin I looked like real wet or something so you couldn't really tell but they but put I was like, so much emphasis on it that it, it has to be something that's and i it. think that a lot of people are convinced that it might be teddy but yeah. according to my theory maybe he's not dead maybe mm. nobody none of the hosts are dead because when i was watching i was definitely like oh my god that's teddy yeah oh my god that's teddy and then like the scene just before that he was having like this very like heart to heart moment with dolores at the top of like this mountain or like yeah. ridge or whatever so then to just go from that scene to like him floating like face down in the water yeah. i was like it, what happened? It might be him. And who did it? Well, you know, it might be Bernard, because when he's looking at this body of water and all those people, he's like, I killed them all. But then again, his brain is all jumbled That's and true. he's like yeah, he freaking out, that messed brain up. Fluid. Yeah. yeah. So who knows if he's even thinking straight? It could have also been Dolores, because she's going a little bit off yeah. the rails. You can't it, put it, it would past not her. surprise me that she would kill her love, Teddy. <laughs> I would be surprised, but you know what? The path she's going down? You never know. Who knows? You never know. Yeah. All right, so I guess that just about uh, wraps things up. Uh, so this was Mojo Talks' Watch Club. Um, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more Westworld news as well as other great TV and movie stuff. And if you like that stuff too, you know, on Fridays, check out Cinephiles Extended Cut because me and Phoebe are on that too. Um, so guys, <laughs> thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.